Radio Great 12s, we're going to look at the site plan. And this is the second last episode in our series on how to hack your pet. And uh, specifically speaking about what is the requirements for your site plan as part of your working drawing. So first of all, let's just look at the site plan that was given to you uh, in the pad document. I'm sure you've taken the necessary time to read through this. There is one mistake here. This uh, contour height here should only read 420, not 1420. I think some of you have picked that up already. Other than that, it's quite a detailed site plan. We've got our contour lines. We have a building line, that's a 30 meter building line from this border to here. Then we have our municipal sewer line with our manual indicated, its measurements is clearly indicated, also specified as a sewer connection here. Then we've got our corner heights, okay, and we have our adjacent street with our um, vehicle entrance, existing three meter driveway, electrical supply, we've got another building line here. Uh, two on the other side, and they specified to us that our new development must be positioned between this 30 meter building line and the municipal sewer. So I think all of you have given this some thought. I actually did in episode 7, I believe, a detailed discussion on the actual elevation and how to uh, determine that specifically with regard to your elevations that you're going to draw. But for now, you're going to place your, your actual development within the confines of this area here okay so that's going to be important when we draw our site plan we're going to include every bit of information that is available to us okay and we're also going to have to determine our scale remember we've got 80,000 millimeters that's 80 meter that's 115 meters uh, perimeter on this side so the scale is going to be important but this site plan you'll have to take note of and and make sure you copy all the details that's on here. I'm going to show you some examples shortly. Let's quickly go down to the actual question. Okay, we've jumped down here to 5.2 on page 12 of your pad document, where it specifies what is required with regard to that site plan. Okay, first of all, it must be drawn to a suitable scale. All right, and I'm going to exp explain that in a moment. Include the following, all the given general site details and features for stand 82. That's the features, the details that we just discussed on the given site plan. You then have to include the complete proposed new building with the timber deck. Okay, Your driveways, your parking areas, as well as landscaping layout. Okay, This, I think, is the first for you guys. But make sure here that you're actually going to include your landscaping in your actual final site plan. You'll have to show all the sewer detail or as well as the electrical supply. You're going to have to indicate your scale. You're going to have to do dimensions. In other words, uh, the dimensions that's been given to you in the initial site plan plus the setting out dimensions. And I'll show you practical examples of this. But that's where the positioning of your development is going to be and the corner rights. You have to include the north point. All right. If we go to the checklist. Okay. We're at 5.2. The actual checklist of your site plan. Now, the first one is quite clear. As I've stated, all the given site features must be shown on your site plan. Complete proposed new building. So the new building with its timber deck. And here is something new. Correctly sited and shaded. Okay. This means it must be correctly positioned, of course, in that area, that the designated area. You need to label it. In other words, the deck must be labeled, the new, uh, the, the roof area must be labeled, but then also shade it correctly. That means you must use the correct coloring for the different parts of this building. Remember, new brickwork is red. We've got a, a wooden deck, which will be yellow, your sewer, which will be brown. All of that is with regard to the shading. Then again, all sewer detail and the electrical supply, both of them needs to be indicated. Dimensioning, including the setting out dimension and corner heights, suitable scale selected and indicated correctly, as well as your north point. All of that's important and that's going to make sure you get a 10 out of 10 for this section. Let's head over and look at some practical examples. 
Right here, grade 12, we're on the drawing board and we're looking at your site plan. Now, first of all, it's of course going to be on an A3 page. Make sure you do the border all around first things first. Then you have to position your site plan that was given to you within this area. Now, because you've been such good supporters of my channel, here's the biggest step yet. This site plan must be drawn to scale 1 to 500. In other words, each one of these uh, boundaries, these two, are 115 meters or 115,000 millimeters. All right. So to get that distance, you're just going to go 115,000 divided by 500, and that's going to give you 230. This edge here is 230 millimeters. The same calculation with this side. That's 80,000 millimeters. You're going to divide that by 500, and it's going to give you your 160 millimeters for the ends. The same with all the other measurements that you have to add in on this drawing. The positioning of the boundary lines, your um, sewer line, your contour lines. Please do this with a nice French curve. Make sure it's neat. Go and populate this fully with all the information that was given. That's your first step. Don't leave anything out. The second step is for you now to position your actual new building, and you're going to be using your floor plan for that, in this area. I'm going to just do a rough uh, population of our um, new building, and then I'm going to take you to the next step. Let's get going. Okay, I've just positioned a massing of a possible uh, design. Of course, I didn't do the measurements 100% correct, ignore that. But just let, let's look at the positioning. It is within our designated area. I've got my wooden deck, of which 50% is under the roof covering. And then I've got my actual building and I've got the roof lines. Okay, that's kind of the minimum. Now we need to make sure we follow the actual requirements because we need to add sewer here. We need to add our different coloring, our uh, setting out measurements. So let's have a look at that. The first things first, let's do our setting out measurements. Okay, so setting out measurements on this actual drawing here is if we have a, a, a contractor to go and build this new development, they must be able from our boundaries be able to determine what is the placement of this building. And so if you have to give at least two references to help them determine this corner here. Another measurement that you could add in is the actual full length of this building and the full width of the building. All right, then with regard to our, our sewer, it already stated that our sewer falls at 1 to 10, uh, all right, 1 to 10, and it's given us the direction towards this manhole here. Okay, so your sewer, okay, let's say here's your inspection eyes going out of your bathrooms, okay, you, yours might look different. Then we're going to join our municipal sewer, and show you how to do that. Of course, this is our internal sewer line. Let's say we had another uh, bathroom here in this corner. Okay, that would have joined up here. Here we have our inspection eyes, of course, at the, all of these junctions. Inspection eyes. At the end of this, we'll have a rotting eye, of course. And then here, there will be a change in direction, of course. And that would be, again, a rotting eye or I would actually put an inspection chamber in here if I was you, because there's a junction. Okay, so you could say I see inspection chamber. All right, and then this sewer will be colored in brown, using my daughter's crayons here. Um, but I think you get the plan here. Sorry, it's not that neat, but the idea for you is to make sure all of this Sewer detail is nice and brown, okay? And then our actual deck, we're going to color in yellow. Okay, please don't do it as quickly as I'm doing it. It's just for the sake of explaining it. This will be yellow then. And our actual new building 
will be colored red okay very light shade make sure you color it all the way through so it looks nice and neat all right and then uh, let's just double check the list okay the one thing that's missing here is of course our north point which you will just uh, include in your actual drawing all right let me show you one other example of a previous year's site plan you see uh, quite a number of measurements indicated there's no uncertainty with regard to the setting out of these buildings um, you've got your colors very neatly done with your sewer indicated, your building lines, corner lights, contour lines, etc. Um, the driveway is also complete and that's one thing on, on my example that I've given you that I didn't complete is make sure you get your driveways in, your parking base allocated and it also asks for even landscaping. So if you want to add a couple of extra trees, uh, grass areas, all of that, of course, you're welcome to do so. All right, Northern Arrow is absolutely important and make sure you label it nice and clear. All right, that's it. That's a quick overview of the site plan. All the best. Now it's your turn.